Good afternoon and welcome to RandPaul2010.com. Glad you could stop by today. You know, many questions in history we debate about the causes, the Great Depression, the Cold War, you know, what the ultimate historical answers to why these things happened and how they ended are very important so in the future we do a better job with our public policy. Many people said the Cold War ended simply because we outspent them or because we had a more mighty military. And these are kind of true, but ultimately, really, the Cold War ended. And the reason we won the Cold War is one precise economic fact. And that economic fact is that you cannot determine the price of any good or service by setting that price by a government uh, bureau. In the Soviet Union, all of the prices were set, so they'd set the price of bread. And when they set the price of bread, that signal, that signal that went back to the economy, there was no signal, there was no profit, there was no ability to decide how much bread should be produced or how much will be consumed. So consequently, there were shortages, there were lines, but also consequently, the engine of socialism was weaker than the engine of capitalism. So we were able to outspend the Soviet Union during the Cold War, but we did so because we had the engine of capitalism. We must never forget that. It is the engine of capitalism that won the Cold War, and it is the engine of capitalism that provides a great amount of humanitarian aid to not only our country, but around the world. The reason this is important is we're now in the midst of a healthcare debate, and people say, oh, well, you know, what we have is not working, what we have is capitalism. Well, that's so far from being true. What we have in healthcare, in my particular practice, over 50% of my practice, the prices are fixed by government. In the remaining portion of my practice, even though it's private insurance, the prices are somewhat fixed in the sense that if you're a Blue Cross patient, you go to any doctor in town, you have the same price. There is no price competition for doctor's services because it seems to all be set. Part of that's because the government controls over half of it, but part of that's even in the private insurance, you have an intermediary, someone between you and the service. You don't pay your doctor for your service, you pay an insurance company. And this system hasn't been working because you don't have freely fluctuating prices. We need to understand this when we ask the question, what are we going to do about health care? We have to ask, do we already have too much government involved in health care or too little government? Do we want to blame healthcare problems that we have now on capitalism when there's very little capitalism involved in healthcare? Or do we want to look at healthcare and say, how could we get more capitalism involved? How could we get the consumer paying for the product so the prices can come down? I think there are ways of doing it. I think there are ways of looking even at the current system and saying, how can we get the consumer more involved with buying their product? And it's not through mandatory health insurance that the government forces everyone to buy. We've seen that. It happened in Massachusetts where people are required to buy insurance that has uh, infertility coverage where you have $50,000, $100,000 bills for in vitro fertilization. The government requires everyone to have this. Even the instance of the woman who had eight children out in California, I think it was subsidized by the government to pay for health care several million dollars. We need to have these choices be more private choices and have there be economic repercussions. But think about it. The next time someone says the Cold War ended and we won the Cold War, think about why we won the Cold War. We won the Cold War because the engine of capitalism defeated the engine or the lack of an engine in socialism. Thanks for dropping by RandPaul2010.com. Hope you'll come back soon.